if I were to take two people here, let's say you and you, and give you the same word to remember, the word is baker, and I said to you, remember that there is a guy whose last name is Baker. It's in capital B, Baker. And I said to you, remember that there is a guy whose job, whose profession, is that he is a baker, lowercase b, baker. And I come back to you after some time and say, do you remember that word that I was asking you about? The person who was told his name was Baker is going to be less likely to remember the same word as the person who was told his profession is Baker. Very interesting. Same word, different amount of remembering. Why is that? Well, the name Baker is untethered. It has no associational hooks. It has no meaning to us, right? The word Baker, the common noun Baker, we know Bakers. Bakers wear funny white hats. They have hands that are caked in flour. They smell good when they come home from work. Maybe we even, maybe we even know a Baker who lives down the street. There's all sorts of associations that are made with the word Baker, and it gets integrated into the web of all the other things that we know. The entire art of remembering, the entire art of one of these competitions and of remembering in real life is figuring out how to transform capital B bakers into lowercase b bakers, figuring out ways to take information that is otherwise meaningless, untethered, and figure out ways to tether it to the things that we already know. So. This is, I was surprised to learn, almost entirely an act of imagination. It wouldn't strike you as, this, as such. That the art of remembering should be uh, the art of engaging one's imagination. Uh, I would have thought that the idea of sitting around remembering a whole lot of numbers couldn't, what could possibly be more boring. In fact, what's, being, what's happening in one of these contests, and what's happening if you want to remember in everyday life, is you have to engage your imagination. This is ancient advice that goes back to some of the earliest writings on memory in classical Latin 2,000 years ago. You have to figure out how to take information and make it visual. You have to figure out how to make that visual, image, uh, uh, visual imagery strange. Figure out how to make it bizarre, how to make it beautiful, how to make it stinky, how to make it raunchy, how to make it emotionally resonant so that whatever it is, you just can't shake from your imagination. Um, anything that if you had seen it on the street, let's say it was um, Kate Middleton running through the street in a bikini and she's being pelted with rotten bananas, you would run home and you would tell everybody about it, right? That would be memorable. You'd tell your grandchildren about it. I saw Kate Middleton getting pelted by bananas when she was wearing a bikini. That's the kind of image that you're just not going to be able to forget. That's the kind of image you want to create in one of these memory contests, right? So if you were trying to remember a shopping list, say, and the first item on your shopping list was uh, bananas, you might see Kate Middleton getting pelted with rotten bananas while running around in a bikini. That's memorable. And chances are you'll remember the bananas when you go to the, the, to the grocery store. <clears throat> so. You know, this notion that memory and creativity might actually be two sides of the same coin, it's, it's counterintuitive, but it wasn't always so. To a mind trained in the art of memory, to a, the medieval writers on memory, and I really dove into a lot, of, uh, a lot of classical and medieval writings on memory, the notion that memory and creativity are linked was not a foreign idea. In fact, the Latin root inventio, is the source of two words in modern English. One is invention, and the other is inventory. And the notion was you had to have an inventory of ideas, of facts, of knowledge to think about if you were going to invent anything new, right? This is an idea that's kind of been lost, that we have to have stuff knocking around in our skulls if we're going to move through the world appreciating it, if we're going to move through the world linking ideas that didn't previously belong together, if we're going to be creative, you've got to stock your memory. 